Hello everyone, my name is Dennis and I'm leading software development department in Remax Technology. Uh, so high level user interfacing software development for in-vehicle and off-vehicle software, uh, mostly for infotainment and connectivity product lines. Today I'll be talking about uh, the past, the present and the future of building in-vehicle infotainments here in Remax with the power of Qt Framework. So in the beginning, I will tell you a short history uh, of our company and uh, our, a little bit about our internal organization. Then I will guide, guide you through our several generations of infotainment, as well as the generation four, which is said to be our future platform, and which projects uh, we uh, build with, with those platforms. Of course, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask and I will give my best to, to answer them. In our short history uh, in Croatia, in country with absolutely no automotive uh, industry and automotive history, it all started with uh, Mate uh, starting races with his uh, BMW. And after his internal combustion blew up, he started the process of electrification of this BMW and uh, slowly start winning races and figuring out the power of the electric motor. That was the birth of an idea that the electric cars uh, don't have to be boring. They can be really fun and interesting. And then the idea of building our own electric car started, which brought to the Concept One as our first prototype. And then Rimac Nevera, the uh, series uh, globally homologated and uh, also the fastest, uh, fastest uh, electric uh, and fastest car in general uh, that we are now producing and shipping to our customers. Of course, we had a lot of uh, problems along the way. The, the path was not so smooth. And uh, basically, the one part of our business, uh, um, and that is the component business or the business uh, from uh, Rimas Technology, uh, started because of the situation we could not uh, go the traditional way. So we did not have the finances to source all the components from the uh automotive supply chain like the most of the industry does so we started building our own components uh which we then figure out that uh other oems are interested in and this also uh became our uh business business pillar uh we are located in the several offices in in croatia but also uh, uh opened an office in uk and as as you uh as you might see on this chart we are uh we are heavily growing year by year. And uh, of course, after we we also got more and more uh, projects, cooperations with more and more customers, and also um, in total uh, 700 million euros in investments uh, after the last series and after splitting of the two businesses, so the OEM and tier one, uh, we are also, of course, uh, in this growing phase. Uh, this is our new home that is supposed to be built uh, next year. So Rimac Campus, that would have uh, the production area for the Rimac uh, components, but also the offices and also some uh, additional uh, commodities like the hotels and kindergarten, racetrack, uh, and so on. So we are really looking forward to this project and uh, it is supposed to be the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest of its kind in, in, in this part of, of Europe. Regarding the splitting of the businesses, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we were one company called Rimac Automobili. We were doing everything, so we were completely vertically integrated. And now we um, uh, separated the two businesses, so the vehicle business uh, to the company called now Bugatti Rimac after the merger with Bugatti and to the technology business. Uh, and that is now Rimac Technology. So Bugatti Rimac is focusing on the car development and Rimac Technology on the component and technology development for Bugatti Rimac, but also for other, uh, for other OEMs. As a part of Rimac Technology, uh, there are several products in the portfolio. So from the batteries and e-axles and uh, ADAS systems, vehicle systems, to infotainment and uh, connectivity, we will be talking today about the infotainment system. So uh, we are focused on the high performance uh, electric uh, vehicles and hybrid vehicles. And we started with developing the uh, small units, so prototypes, 
Uh, also, the concept one was really small uh, series. Then we started uh, doing some larger series projects, for example, the, the Riemanns Nevera and the Marina Batista, so on. So we're talking about several hundred units. And with the next platform, we are scaling to uh, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of units, depending on the use case. But let's say this is, this is uh, our goal. If we get back to the generation one, so this was the first infotainment uh, built for the uh, concept one car. Uh, we can see that this is, let's say, a bit better uh, development uh, kit assembled in, in, in one product. So this was uh, definitely something that is meant for smaller units and not bigger units. We were using the Annex P's IMX6. Uh, and this is basically the point in time where we uh, explored what kind of software stack shall be used. And then we um, started using Qt. So this is the first time uh, we encountered Qt framework. And we found it very uh, flexible and easy to use back in the days to create something uh, which is really good, really fast. Uh, so we started building our first uh, generation of infotainment uh, on top of the embedded Yocto Linux operating system with one big monolith uh, application built in Qt. So we had two uh, devices, one uh, running the, uh, the, the the central display, the central area, and one running the, the cluster or the, or the cluster display behind the wheels. But those were let's say one uh, big monolith application. So we had coupled the uh, user interface and the middleware part. And uh, as mentioned, we, we had just one application per screen. Uh, this was actually really good back then. Uh, so we managed to, to develop the, the infotainment for concept one, which was, uh, I would say, quite ahead of its time. Uh, we showed uh, pretty much whatever we, we think that might be cool uh, for an end user, and uh, we've shown a lot, lot of data. So you see some of the screenshots here. Uh, really, the 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 end users were really amazing of the approach and 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 the uh, type of data that we could show. Uh, so th this actually served uh, as our first uh, showcase. So uh, the infotainment we built for concept one was was catchy and um, some other uh, then OEMs uh, will, were interested in having some prototypes with us. And that led us to the uh, two other projects at the time. And that was the prototypes for Renault Zoe and the prototypes for, for Jaguar E-Type. Of course, these were not any series uh, projects and so on. So this was just one, uh, one of a kind. And uh, but we we leverage the same uh, the same technology and the same approach from the from the concept one, and we managed to to do this two prototypes in really a short amount of time. So uh, as you can see, different user interface, but uh, completely different uh, completely different look and feel under uh, with the same hardware and the same uh, let's say base software. Although it was still one. Uh, monolith application uh, just just reskinned. So this was really cool project. And actually, you can see on the picture, Harry and Megan uh, were driving in this Jaguar after they uh, after they got married. So we were really proud on on, on these projects. We figure out well if if we are going to this direction, we should we should have a more modular approach. So more modular architecture. And that's why while building the Gen 2 infotainment, uh, which was still based on the IMX6 uh, SOC, but from the software point of view, we figure out we need to uh, develop a modular architecture because it does not make sense to have uh, you know, one, single, uh, one single app running everything. And uh, it's not uh, scalable, it's not modular, and it's not really even uh, safe. So what we did is we took all of the functionality that, that, that we had from Gen 1, and then we uh, broken it down into uh, separate middleware services that were all uh, in charge for their own domain. Uh, we all connect, we, we connected all of those domains with the uh, 0MQ as an inter-process communication uh, bus, 
And uh, of course, uh, the user interfaces, uh, user interface applications, they were all also separated. So we had now one modular platform that we could then uh, use for multiple for multiple instances. Uh, regarding the hardware changes, we also uh, now developed a more uh, robust hardware. So this is something that we went through different environmental thermal tests and so on, and it was also. Uh, ready for functional safety features as it uh, we introduced the the separate microcontroller that was served for uh, safety uh, features. The installment of this unit was uh, a, and still is of course in the Aston Martin Valkyrie. So we are also proud taking part into this amazing car and it's being built on uh, infotainment uh, generation too. Taking the same approach, but with more powerful hardware, we continue developing our generation three platform. So as you can see, we took uh, the modules that we have already been developed for the for the uh, for the uh, generation two, but we also added bunch more, bunch more of those, and uh, introduced the same approach to other types of hardware that are part of the infotainment system as a whole. And those are the knob controllers. So the three items that you see here on the right, there are knob controllers, which are also utilizing the same software architecture. And they are also uh, using the zero MQ as a communication bus between the main, the main unit. Uh, since we now have the more powerful hardware in terms of the IMX8 uh, processor, uh, we are now leveraging the one unit for, for, multiple, uh, for running multiple displays. So in terms of uh, Rimac Nevera, as you can see here, uh, we are running three different displays. So the central unit, uh, the, the cluster and the passenger screen uh, with, the, the, with the one infotainment control unit. And of course, we have three different uh, knob units for three different uh, rotary knobs. Uh, in terms of user interfaces, so again, completely bespoke UI, uh, uh, a lot of features, a lot of data, uh, let's say we we kind of level up heavily the approach we had on concept one so we we are showing the really the most of it uh the most that uh, the ivi has access to in the vehicle network with also the completely uh bespoke ui uh designed uh, also in house as you can see pininfarina batista also run uh, on infotainment gen 3 platform Completely different user interface, completely different uh, UX. So two lateral screens and one small uh, central screen resembling the, the heads-up display. Uh, completely different approach, but uh, also run on the same platform. So now we had uh, the more power of uh, uh, having a more modular approach since our entire middleware and the OS is a part of the platform. And then the user interface is something different that uh, can be connected to the to the rest of the platform. This is something that we figure out on the Gen 1 that, that is the way that we are going to. But uh, in at that time, we still did not have the uh, architecture ready and in place. So the Gen 3 is our actual platform being produced and shipped as a part of uh, Rimas Nevera and Pininfarina Batista. And the Gen 4, we are uh, going the step up. So in terms of the modularity, we are also introducing the hypervisor. So we have here QNX as an example, and we will have the mo more uh, operating systems running as a, uh, as a virtual machine. So we are also introducing Android as a completely uh, new operating system, Android Automotive, of course, uh, but we will also keep Linux for some other installments and so on. So the biggest change, of course, in terms uh, of hardware, we are uh, having the more powerful SOC. Uh, still not, uh, we, we still not uh, yet disclosed which one, but it will be more, more powerful. Uh, and in terms of software, we are introducing the modularity. So in terms of multiple virtual uh, machines, multi multiple operating systems, which would uh, then be uh, classified by, by the domain. So you will have one, uh, one operating system you know, for entertainment, one for the safety critical stuff, uh, and so on. So we are kind of having the same philosophy, but now uh, on the more powerful hardware and with even more domain separation. And this is something that will then set up our uh, plans for the for the future development in this manner.
thank you very much and it was this was the five, 15 minutes of uh, Rimat's infotainment history 